Hey everyone, happy new year. Welcome to New Method Live. I am so excited that you're here. Today we're talking about a topic that um, interests, I think, and touches everyone's lives. We're gonna talk about leaky gut. For those of you who know about it, obviously this talk is for you because we're gonna talk about what it is, how it affects us, how we get it. Um, and for those of you who may not be sure exactly what leaky gut is, if you have any stomach issues, bloating, belching, gassiness, um, any type of discomfort, this talk is for you. And for anyone who's suffering with a chronic issue, an autoimmune issue, skin issue, brain fog, anything like that, this talk is for you because likely leaky gut is at the core of it. So we're going to jump in today. We're going to talk about leaky gut, how we got it, what it means. And next week, we're going to talk about how to fix it. So let's dive right in. So as I promised, we're going to talk about leaky gut what it is, what it does to your body, and how do you get it. Before I do that, I do want to say this. There are a lot of medical providers out there that don't believe in leaky gut, and that's okay. So what I did today was I'm arming you with resources. In our blog and on our YouTube channel, we're going to add the resources for everything that I'm talking about today. There is research and articles about every point that I'm going to make, and it's all going to be accessible for you so that you can read it and you could take it with you anywhere you need to take it. That being said, if you have stomach issues, before I even start to talk about leaky gut, if you have any type of stomach issues, you must see a GI first. I want that GI to do an endoscopy, do a colonoscopy, any other test that he or she wants to let us know that we're not dealing with something else. And once they work you up and they say there's nothing wrong with you and it's in your head, then we know we're in the right place. But always see the GI first. Do not diagnose yourself. Okay, stomach issues, GI first, work it up, and then we're going to jump in and start talking and prove to everyone it's not in your head. So talking about leaky gut, we have to talk about two important things, gut barriers and tight junctions, okay? As I told you, it's going to be a little technical, but we have to get in because I want you to understand what we're talking about. When we eat, I want you to think about it. We have this plate of food Maybe we made it in our kitchen, maybe it came from a restaurant, maybe it came from a food truck, but it's the external world. It's not from within, it's from the outside. And now we're gonna take this thing from outside and we're just gonna put it inside of us. When you think about that, that's crazy. We don't know what's on this plate. I mean, you think it's spinach or ice cream, but are there bacteria in it? Is there viruses in it? What's in there? And you're just gonna put it inside your body? And the reason, the answer is yes, right? We put it inside our body. And the reason is, because we have this really cool thing called a gut barrier. It's the lining. And this lining's job is intense. First thing it does is it has to go into the food and decide, all right, nutrients, you can come in. Water, you can come in. But anything it doesn't recognize as good for us, it has to barrier out. In fact, this barrier's job is so important that it takes 40% of our energy at any given time. So when you're sitting and chilling, 40% of your energy is going to making sure that that external world that you're putting inside of you is not wreaking havoc. And the way it does that is with this thing called tight junctions. So think of it as like gates. There's gates in the lining that allow just some things in, allows water in, allows nutrients in, but it doesn't let the bad stuff in. And those tight junctions are really critical to keep us safe. And they can get a little bit bigger and a little bit smaller depending on what we need. And that's called, the fancy word for it is intestinal permeability. So it needs to allow just a little bit in. But what happens if these junctions get a little bit too loose or if they stay open too long? Well, as you can imagine, now the bad stuff starts to come in. That's called leaky gut. When the intestinal lining and those tight junctions are messed with, and we're going to talk about why in a moment, and when they're messed with and they allow the pathogens, the bad stuff in, that's leaky gut. And it's going to cause a mess. So that first line of defense for us, that, that barrier, that gut, that lining, is imperative for it to be intact. And when we mess with it, this is when the mess starts. So who cares? Okay, so some bad stuff comes in. Who cares? Why do I even care? E, what, what, why are you telling me this? Well, because when bad stuff comes in, bad stuff happens specifically a bad thing called inflammation. 
And if there's one thing you might know with inflammation, it's probably not a good thing when we have too much of it. So when you have leaky gut, I'm going to talk to you about what happens when you have leaky gut, how it affects your body. So I want you to know why you should even care about this. Like who cares about leaky gut? I'm going to tell you why. Well, of course, the first thing that it does is it hurts your belly. You could have belching, bloating after eating, diarrhea, constipation, just like yuck after eating, just a sense of just not feeling well, right? That's obvious. We're talking about the gut, leaky gut, your belly is going to be off. That's kind of an obvious one. But I want you to know is that when your belly is off, that's a neon sign. That's a red flag. And that's just the first layer. What's happening behind the scenes is a volcano is brewing. And when it erupts, that's disease. So if your belly is off all the time, it's not just in your belly. You don't just need a Tums. It's actually letting you know, hey, if your belly's off, your inflammation is everywhere in your body and it's going to make a mess. I need you to listen to those danger signs. So what is it that it does? One of the things that it does, believe it or not, is it makes your allergies and your asthma worse. A little crazy, right? But if you think about it, why would you be allergic to pollen or an apple? It's natural. Why are you allergic to it? You're allergic to it because your body treats it as a foreign object and creates an antibody to it. We all know the word antibody these days. It creates an immune response to it. So if we have a leaky gut and now the body's having this immune response, this inflammation to all this stuff that's not supposed to be there, guess what? It heightens the immune response to everything. It makes the allergies worse, the asthma worse. So people who have leaky gut will have worsening asthma, worsening allergies, be grabbing the Zyrtec over and over again. So if your asthma has been getting worse lately, if your allergies have been getting worse lately, I want you to start thinking, is this leaky gut? The next thing is autoimmune diseases. Auto means self, immune, right? Attacking yourself. So we could talk about psoriasis. We could talk about Hashimoto's. That's the thyroid. We could talk about rheumatoid arthritis, lupus. Anything that's in the autoimmune family is from leaky gut. And that's because the body starts to react to all these proteins that are coming through. And then there's this thing called molecular mimicry. You can Google it. It just means that the body starts to get confused. And instead of attacking this protein, it starts attacking the self protein. So if you have an autoimmune issue, you can bet that you have a leaky gut and that needs to be addressed. Hormones. Hormones from leaky gut. A very common hormone issue that many of you might be suffering with or heard someone suffering with is called PCOS. PCOS is when we have a leaky gut and things start going through to that bloodstream, it starts to increase our insulin receptor and increasing our testosterone level, which we don't want for women, increasing that testosterone level, which causes period problems, fertility issues, skin issues, all of that just from your leaky gut. Chronic fatigue, myalgia, which is a fancy word for muscle pain, all from leaking gut. Why? Inflammation, inflammation, inflammation. Stomach issues, of course, as I mentioned, mm -hmm. like GERD, reflux. If you've ever been diagnosed with IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, which just means your belly's a mess, that's leaky gut. But even IBD, like Crohn's, has been shown to be part of leaky gut. Skin issues is next. If your skin is off, your belly is off. The skin and the belly are connected. You have something going on in your skin, you have something going on in your belly. So whether it's eczema, acne, psoriasis, uh, rosacea, it's all from the belly. In fact, there's this one study which I found amazing, maybe you will as well, is that when they took patients who had psoriasis, that's just a skin rash, and they looked at their belly, something called the microbiome, which we'll talk about in a second, the bellies of the people with psoriasis were the same as the bellies for people who are chronic alcoholics. It was a mess in there. And they realized that to fix the psoriasis, it wasn't just about creams. It wasn't on the outside. They had to fix the belly. So if your skin is off, your belly is off. Mental health issues, anywhere from brain fog to anxiety to depression is linked to your gut. There's this thing called the gut brain access. I didn't make it up. Look it up. Your belly is off. Your brain is going to be off. So we need to fix that. If you have any of those things going on, we need to fix it. Remember, I'm not telling you to come off your medications. If you're on medications, stay on them. But let's fix your gut 
and maybe one day you can come off of those medications. And of course, muscle and joint pain. If you're aching, if it's hard for you to bend down and tie your shoes, I have a patient who says it was hard for him to pick up his wallet if, fell down, if it fell down. Once we fix your belly, all of that goes away. So you realize now that leaky gut is not just about your gut, right? Everything I listed here, allergies, asthma, autoimmune, hormones, chronic fatigue, stomach issues, skin issues, mental health issues, muscle pain, joint pain, all of it is tied to your belly. So it's a big deal. It's not just your belly. It's just about everything. So you might be asking, okay, I got it. It's a big deal. But how the heck did this happen to me? Like, when did this all happen? So I'm going to tell you. We have to talk about this thing called microbiome and dysbiosis. Big words. As I said, you could always Google them, but I'm going to tell you what they are. The microbiome is the world that lives inside your belly. Inside your belly, there's a delicate balance of good bacteria and bad bacteria. And they have to kind of be like this. Obviously, we can't have too much bad bacteria. But believe it or not, we also shouldn't have too much good bacteria. It needs to be just the right amount, a nice diverse amount of good and bad. And that's called the microbiome. If that microbiome is messed with, the fancy word for that is dysbiosis. Basically, something happened to the microbiome. So dysbiosis means my microbiome is off. So what causes dysbiosis? As you can see that I wrote it here, one of the biggest causes of dysbiosis is antibiotics. Antibiotics is a big issue. And if you're my patient in primary care, you know that I will do everything in my power not to give you antibiotics if you don't need it. Remember, if you don't need it, if you need it, I'll be the first one to write it for you. But I always spend time on my patients and let them know, hey, maybe you don't need antibiotics for that one day of sniffles. Why? Because it's going to mess with your microbiome. And I tell my patients, the easiest thing for me to do is just write a script and send you on your way. And I'm sure with a raise of hand, you know how many doctors out there and medical providers out there, they'll just write it and go. Instead, I spend time on my patients and let them know, don't take this antibiotic you don't need this. And the reason is, is because it's microbiome. Another thing that is very popular that messes with your microbiome are NSAIDs. Motrin, Advil, aspirin. You take those over time, they're messing with your gut. And of course, viruses and other bugs. So we all know about viruses, but I'm talking stomach bugs, but also any type of virus. If you ever heard someone say, or maybe you're experiencing saying, ever since I had X, whatever virus it is, I haven't been the same. And the reason that is, is because whatever that virus is, messed with your microbiome, caused a leaky gut and started affecting your entire body. So you're not wrong. Ever since you had X, you're not feeling well, that's because of this and we have to start healing your body. What else messes with your microbiome besides antibiotics, NSAIDs and viruses? Stress. So we know about the stress here and here, right? Psychological, emotional stress that reduces your immune system, re reduces your immune response and things start going crazy. But also physical stress, chronic pain. If you're constantly overusing, even if you're thinking, hey, I'm exercising a lot, but if you're over-exercising and injuring yourself, that chronic stress will mess with your microbiome. Of course, toxic toxins, mold, pollution, pesticides will mess with your microbiome. But the number one thing that will mess with your microbiome is your diet. The standard American diet initials are sad because it's sad, are, is, is wreaking havoc in the microbiome, which in turn is causing leaky gut, which in turn is making a mess. There are foods that are toxic. There are foods that are inflammatory. And most likely you're eating them and we need to remove them from your life. The toxins, I know you know these, but I'm going to say it anyway, sugar. Sugar, 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 I'm sorry. It's a toxin, it messes with your belly, it creates leaky gut. Alcohol, again, I know it's a favorite, it's causing your leaky gut. Artificial sweeteners, and the list goes on. But there's even things that people are considering healthy that are messing with your gut and may be causing leaky gut. Legumes, right, the beans, if they're causing you distress, they're messing with your belly, they need to be removed. A lot of grains and of course gluten, all of that will cause leaky gut. And remember, it's not just about your belly, it's your whole system. So we talked a lot today. 
We talked about what leaky gut is. Now you know what it is. It's intestinal permeability. And as I said, I'm going to give you the articles. We talked about what it does to your body, uh, basically everything. And we talked about how we got there, which is basically your microbiome, how we get messed up, what are the things that we're putting into our body that are messing with our microbiome. And I'm hoping now that you have a better sense of leaky gut is. And if you don't, of course, we're here for you. Next week, we're going to talk about how to test for leaky gut. And then, of course, we're going to talk about how to treat leaky gut. But I already talked for 20 minutes, and it's a lot. And I want you to have time to process this before we talk about solutions next week.